Hello my friends, David Kessler here and welcome back to the studio. Today we want to talk about five artist mistakes that I see all the time. All right, let's get started. Drum roll please. Number one, using cheap paint. <laughs> cheap artists use cheap paint. Look, I know when you're first starting out, and you don't have a lot of money to spend on materials, I understand. I've been there. When I first started with acrylic painting, I used cheap paint. Cheap paint, or student grade paint, is primarily composed of fillers and very little pigment. That's why the paints look dull, sometimes dirty, and not always the color that it says on the outside of the tube, because there's very little pigment in there. So if you want your paintings to look their best and to look good, you should use professional quality paint. And there are lots of manufacturers to choose from out there. And you can look at those, play with them, uh, see which ones work best for you. You can um, uh, test different brands. You can see which one is most cost effective. Right, and I've done videos on paints before. But using cheap paint, Number one, it's not gonna last as long. Number two, it's not gonna be as brilliant. It's not gonna give you the kind of results that you're looking for in your paintings, okay? So loosen up the purse strings just a little bit, buy some good quality paint, it will go further, right? And your paintings will look better and your clients, people that buy your paintings, your customers will thank you. <laughs> number two, and much related to number one is, not using enough paint. So cheap artists, not only do they use cheap paint, they don't use enough of the cheap paint. I see this in every single workshop. When we're using acrylic paint, I mean, I'll see an artist with a little dime-sized dab of paint on the palette. So there's like, you know, 10 of those little dabs. Look, you can't make a painting with 10 little dabs of paint. Put some paint out there and use good stuff. If it's not on the palette, it's not gonna make its way to the surface. And I see this all the time that artists are struggling to cover the canvas. And they say, well, what's wrong? I can't, you know, the paint's not spreading. Well, it's because you're not using enough paint. You have to use plenty of paint to be able to thoroughly blend the paint on the surface or to blend your edges to make the whole thing flow smoothly you need to use plenty of paint, okay? Number three, using non-archival materials in your paintings. This has come to my attention lately that a lot of people, for whatever reason, I guess, to give some texture to their surfaces, which is no excuse, by the way, are using drywall mud. I can't tell you how detrimental this material is going to be to those paintings in the future. It's just not going to hold up. It's, it's going to deteriorate the surface of your painting. And they say, well, I put sealer on it, I sealed this, and I sealed the layer of that. Look, people, it's not meant for painting. As a matter of fact, drywall mud and drywall was never meant to be surfaces used for walls permanent walls and houses. It was used after World War II to erect temporary housing to put it up quickly and inexpensively. And somehow that moved us into using it all the time for every other building from then on. But drywall mud will deteriorate on your canvas regardless of what you do to it. Okay, it's not a good archival material. Nobody should be using it. Use a modeling paste right that's archival that will work for your paintings that's made to work for your paintings does it cost more than drywall mud yeah do you want your paintings to be around in 25 years i think probably the people that bought them will <laughs> so make every effort to make those as sustainable as possible so that they're going to be around and don't use materials that are not archival no matter how cool you think it is it's not cool. What's cool is having something that lasts for generations. Okay. Number four. 
and I've talked about this ad nauseum, painting directly from a photograph. Oh, here's what you do. Use the photograph as a reference to build a composition for painting. A photograph taken by you as a reference piece is not a completed painting. It's a jumping off point to develop a composition for a painting. A photograph is very different than a composition for a painting. Develop a composition based on that photographic reference and then make a value study based on the composition and then paint from that and then put the photograph away. Uh, this is an age old way that people have painted or painting from life is very different than painting from a photograph. Painting plein air or painting figurative work from life is a wonderful way to learn to be a painter, but not painting directly from a photograph. And I can't emphasize how much, how important this is. And this is the biggest fault I see of most artists today, particularly amateur painters. Okay, and number five, overworking a painting. Oh my gosh. How many times have I seen somebody just beat, 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 beat and try to beat a painting into submission? People, it doesn't work like that. Give it up. Just so over it. Throw it away. Cut it off the stretcher. Please, the poor painting can't take any more. <laughs> you got to know when to stop. You got to know when it's still has some freshness and some life and some vitality. You know, you're going to beat all the life out of it, trying to fix it, right? If you don't get to the point where it needs fixing, then you don't have to worry about that. Keep it light, keep it fresh, keep it intuitive, keep it spontaneous, and don't work it to death. Please, I'm begging you, the world doesn't need another overworked painting you can go anywhere and see plenty of them, okay? So I hope you like this video. If you do, please feel free to share it with your friends. You can subscribe to the channel. I would greatly appreciate that, and thank you for doing that. And I'll put a link to my website and a list of workshops where you can join me and paint with me in multiple locations across the country, and I would love to see you there. So I hope this video was helpful for you, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks.